Periods are a pain, aren't they? But in my work as a clinician, period health is one of the first signs that I look at when assessing a dancer's nutritional status. So I need you to know how to support optimal period health. And today, that's exactly what we're chatting about. Hi, I'm Rachel Fine, a registered dietitian nutritionist specializing in all things about food, nutrition, and health for dancers. I'm here to teach you how to best utilize food to support your performance, but in a way that feels good and not stressful nor restrictive. Now, for many dancers, period irregularities are unfortunately quite common, but make no mistake, just because something is common doesn't mean it's normal nor encouraged. In fact, period irregularities could be a sign that something way more serious is going on. And this is exactly why, as dancers, we want to do what we can to best support optimal period health. But before we do that, let's first dive into what I mean when I mention period irregularities. There are two main types of irregularities that we see amongst most dancers, and they fall under the umbrella of amenorrhea. The first is a delayed onset of menstruation. This is known as primary amenorrhea, and we usually define this as the complete absence of period by the age of 16. Secondary amenorrhea, on the other hand, this is when already established periods go irregular. Either periods that have been well-established and regular go irregular for three or more months, or periods that have not yet been established or regular in any one dancer's life go missing for six or more months. So as you can see, there are a couple different categories when we're defining which type of amenorrhea a dancer might be struggling with. While there are many factors that can impact period health and lead to these period irregularities, functional hypothalamic amenorrhea is what we're really gonna be focusing on today because it's a type of secondary amenorrhea that results from energy imbalances. The most common reason why we see period irregularities amongst the dance population. So why might a period go missing for a dancer? Well, the first thing we look at are energy imbalances. Now an energy imbalance means that your body doesn't have enough calories coming in to match the calories coming out or the calories expended through your physical dancing but also through your metabolic functioning. And this manifests in two different ways, either with under fueling or not eating enough and or over exercising. So these are the two main red flags that I'll look for when considering why a dancer is experiencing irregular periods. But those aren't the only reasons why this could happen. Taking oral contraceptives can be a reason, experiencing a recent or rapid weight loss. So this could be a product of sickness or it could be a product of restrictive dieting. Another reason is a severe reduction or having too low of a percentage of body fat. Natural causes like pregnancy and breastfeeding. Also high levels of stress or trauma and hormonal imbalances that are unrelated to energy imbalances. So something like PCOS or thyroid dysfunction. These are just some of the additional reasons why we might see periods go missing. And what's most interesting about this list is that nearly half, if not more, are related to lifestyle factors, such as your weight changes, your stress levels, your exercise routines, and your ability to fuel your body. And that type of secondary amenorrhea that I just mentioned earlier, functional hypothalamic amenorrhea that usually occurs from energy imbalances, happens when the hypothalamus, which by the way is a gland located at the base of your brain, dysregulates and slows production of two key hormones necessary for regular menstruation, specifically estrogen and progesterone. Now you might be wondering, Rachel, I'm not looking to get pregnant anytime soon. Why do I even need to have a period? Well, let's back up a little bit. The production of those hormones, estrogen, progesterone, and even testosterone are needed for way more than just reproductive purposes. In fact, 
These hormones play key roles in other metabolic functions, such as the building of strong bones. And this is where we start to see the onset of negative complications associated with energy imbalances, specifically relative energy deficiency in sport or red S, a topic I've previously covered in another video. Red S encompasses several different negative complications that occur as a product of energy imbalance. And I've also spoken about how previously the female athlete triad was utilized to identify the relationship between negative energy imbalance and the impact it had on low bone density and injury. But in over a decade, we've shifted from this terminology as we now know there are many more complications that occur resulting from energy imbalances. And we also know that all dancers can struggle with energy imbalances, not just dancers who menstruate. But for you specifically, you're watching this video, which means that you've likely menstruated at some point in your past and then perhaps are experiencing menstrual irregularities. Or maybe your cycle is now practically non-existent. This is where we're gonna have to have a sit down because restricted eating patterns, especially when coupled with exhaustive exercise routines, can both trigger and exacerbate the very negative complications that I'm referring to. The bottom line, we wanna make sure you're steering clear of the risk of relative energy deficiency in sport. We wanna make sure that you are supporting strong bones and you're not gonna leave yourself to issues down the road, such as with severe bone loss, often experienced with osteopenia and osteoporosis, in addition to infertility. This is why, more than ever, thinking about your period health is truly gonna benefit you, not just now in the short term, but also very much in the long term. So what should you do? Well, the first thing is to identify and intervene upon the possibility of disordered eating behaviors. I know a lot of dancers who might feel that their eating patterns are not disordered, so why are they not getting a period? Just understand that disordered eating is actually a spectrum. Examples include dieting, restrictive food rules like clean eating, intense and exhaustive exercise routines. If you feel like you need to compensate for various eating experiences like burning off calories or saving up calories for an upcoming event, even and compensatory eating behaviors like binge eating can be a sign of disordered eating patterns. Additionally, frequent weight fluctuations and overall obsessive behaviors and thoughts around food could all be signs of disordered eating. Working with a registered dietitian nutritionist will be your best bet to help intervene upon these behaviors. I have a bunch of free resources that you can utilize to get started. The Healthy Dancer comes with a free trial period, and I've got a bunch of free bonus guides over on my website, dancenutrition.com. One of the things you're gonna wanna think about is, are you getting enough in during the day? Is your calorie intake truly matching your calorie expenditure or what you're burning? Now, I'm not encouraging that you go and Google various calculations to try and figure this out. This is why I highly encourage you work with a dietitian because there are many ways in which we can identify an amount of food that works for your body without having to turn to obsessive calculations and calorie counting. Now, with that said, for a lot of the dancers that I work with within The Healthy Dancer, a flexible calorie awareness might often be needed in the very beginning, especially if a dancer is coming from dancer diet culture thinking that their baseline calorie needs are much lower than what they need to be. So as an example, I'll have many dancers who come to me thinking that their snacks, if any, should range in the 100 calorie range. Well, I'm just telling you right now that any person, a dancer, an athlete, a non-dancer, someone who's not an athlete, 100 calories is never enough for a snack. But unfortunately, this messaging is so stringent in our culture, in our grocery stores. So this is where a calorie awareness may be helpful just to ensure that you are meeting a minimum baseline to get your body where it needs to be for adequate nourishment. But I can't stress this enough. Doing this alongside a registered dietitian nutritionist is highly encouraged because there's a very thin line when it comes to calorie awareness and calorie counting or calorie obsession. You can also utilize some of my core values from The Healthy Dancer. And this involves a flexible meal and snack plan that encourages balanced meals and snacks, 
consistently throughout your day. So avoiding major gaps of time in between meals and snacks. This usually looks like you're having a meal or snack every two to three hours, but of course this can really vary depending on the dancer. Some dancers I work with, you'll need to have a snack closer to every two hours. Other dancers, you might be able to go more like three hours in between your meals and snacks. But it's super important that when we're constructing these meals and snacks, they're balanced so that they promote energy, fullness, satisfaction to get you through those couple hours. If you are working to recover your periods, then a process like intuitive eating might not be your goal right now. When I talk about intuitive eating, I'm meaning honoring your body's intuitive cues of hunger, fullness, satisfaction, considering the pleasure factor of your foods, and all of this work is incredibly important. But for dancers who do need to recover their periods, more often than not, we're actually relying less on our intuitive cues of hunger and instead relying more on a proactive fueling plan just to ensure that we really are getting in those calories to meet adequate nourishment. Another factor to consider when attempting to achieve adequate nourishment is are my exercise routines too intense, too exhaustive. I've had to work with some dancers who will take some time off just so that we can get their body to a place of energy balance, only to soon after reintroduce dance in a way that is more sustainable and supportive. What's the point of attempting to maintain an exhaustive dance and cross training schedule if it's just gonna lead you to injury sooner than later? We really wanna practice sustainable behaviors as dancers. So if this means dialing down your cross training habits, then this is something to seriously consider. I will hear from a lot of dancers who will say, Rachel, I'm eating a very sufficient amount during the day. I'm fueling my body with balanced meals and snacks. I'm eating consistently, but I still don't have a period. At this point, we say, well, what do your movement routines look like? There's no doubt that dancers more than the average person move more. And if you can't take time away from dance, can we dial down other physical activity in your schedule. Exhaustive exercise routines can really exacerbate a chronic level of stress in your body. We really want to make sure that we're encouraging adequate rest and recovery. And if it means having a conversation with the higher ups in your schools and your companies, well, then this is something that's gonna be super important. Remember, the health and sustainability of your dancing is going to reflect upon your ability to reduce your risk to injury. If we are partaking in behaviors that are increasing your risk to injury, we're not supporting your long-term performance. And this is even more of a reason for studio owners, teachers, directors to really support rest, recovery, and more sustainable behaviors. So once you've evaluated your eating routine, you're fueling your body adequately, you're honoring your body's need for rest and recovery, are there additional points that we can think about to help with period recovery? And yes, we can consider some nutrients to help support the process even more. The first nutrient I wanna highlight is fat. As I mentioned earlier, not having enough body fat on your body is one of the reasons why we see periods go missing. Fat also plays a major role in vitamin and mineral absorption. Vitamin D, an important vitamin for bone building, is considered a fat-soluble vitamin. Essentially what this means, our bodies need fat for the absorption, transport, and utilization of vitamin D. There's even some preliminary research supporting full fat dairy for not just bone health because it's rich in calcium and vitamin D, but also for period health. So dancers swap those low fat yogurts, swap out that fat free milk, choose whole. One study found that one to two servings of full fat dairy per day supported ovulation, whole grains, and other sources of complex carbs can help to promote steady blood sugar. Whole grains and complex carbohydrates like rice and whole grain bread can help to support steady blood sugar and a hormone called insulin. But just beware, complex carbohydrates are rich in fiber and fiber is great for our body's digestive regularity and blood sugar control but too much fiber might be related to period irregularities. This is something that I often see amongst dancers who are partaking in clean eating. 
those very dancers who are telling me, Rachel, I'm eating enough. I'm eating a sufficient, quote unquote, healthy, quote unquote, clean diet. Why aren't I getting a period? It could be related to an excessively high intake of fiber. So if you can relate, if you feel that most of your choices are whole grain or rich in fiber, while I know this challenges most of the messages you've likely heard around carbohydrates, I do want to encourage you to make some swaps to lower fiber options throughout this period recovery process. And the last nutrient I want to highlight is iron. Plant-based foods like beans and lentils, in addition to dark leafy greens and meats, might also promote fertility. So we covered a ton in regards to what dancers can consider when constructing a meal plan that supports period health. We even highlighted a couple different foods and nutrients that you can think about. But head over to the blog post where you can read and learn about more. What I want to leave you off with today is a mention on day-to-day -day stress. If you find that you are struggling with a lot of overwhelm and anxiety and stress, then considering supportive behaviors that can help to navigate through this emotional distress is super important. Working with a mental health therapist is encouraged alongside the use of productive coping mechanisms like taking some rest and listening to music. I hope you found this video helpful, especially in regard to supporting period recovery. As I mentioned, head over to dancenutrition.com, search period to learn more. And if you feel this video has helped, then just do me the biggest favor, then give it a like and subscribe so you're first to know when I post new helpful videos. Until next time.